Power, Sister Minnie W. Hamlin, Sister Marshelle Hood, Sister Lois L. Jackson, Sister Emma Johnson, Sister Laura Johnson, Sister Gladys Marshall, Brother Reverend, Reverend Randall Parker, Brother Benny Phillip, Sister Odessa Porter, Sister Lois Rees, Sister Constance Shepherd Applewhite, Sister Bessie Taylor, Brother Richard Taylor, Brother, Brother Irvin and Sister Reuben Waits, Sister Lurlene Whitney, and Sister Paula M. Williams, and Sister Shirley Williams. And we want to pray for our outreach inmate, uh, Brother Nathan, Nathaniel Dixon, uh, Brother Daryl Fair, Brother Richard Garrison, Brother Anthony Parker, and Brother Leonard Potts. We know our God is able. We know all we got to do is just give it to him and let go and let God. Amen? Because we know he's a healer. We know he's a deliverer. And we know there's nothing impossible our God can't do. Amen? Amen. So let us go to the word, Lord in prayer. Amen? Father God, we come right now, Lord, to take this time to say thank you. Thanking you, Father God, for, for just being God and God Almighty. Thanking you for this day, O oh Lord. Thank you for bringing us to your house of worship today, Lord, in the building, on YouTube, and on Facebook. Lord, we come right now, Lord, calling upon your holy name, Lord, for a touch, for a healing to take place, for a deliverance to take place, for those names that have been called, Lord. Let them know, Father God, that they are in your protection, your circle of protection. Let them know you are able to heal, deliver, and set free. Let them know, Father God, all they got to do is keep looking to the hills. When's coming their help, Lord? You know their name, Father God. You know their circumstance, Father God. You know what they are going through. But, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come calling on you and ask you to have mercy, asking you to make a way for them, Father God. Heal, deliver, and set free, Father God. Look after those behind prison walls, Lord. Just to let them know, just because they shut in, they not shut out, Father God. Bless your children this day, Lord. Go with us. Continue to be with us. Strengthen us. In the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's give it up for God. Hallelujah. God is good. God is great. And he's greatly to be praised. How y'all feeling on this Wednesday evening? Amen. All right. All is well. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know that we all are friends of God? How many of y'all truly know we are friends of God? And we all know a friend is always indeed. Hallelujah. Who am I that you are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call? Is it true that you are thinking of me, how you love me? It's amazing. Come on, y'all. Who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me. That you hear me. When I call. When I call. Say, is it true? Is it true that you are thinking of me? Or how you love me. How you love me. So amazing. It's, it's amazing. I am a friend of God. 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 He calls me friend. Say, I am a friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. 
I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Go, y'all. Who am I? Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me. That you hear me. When I call. When I call. Is it true? Is it true that you are thinking of me? Or how you love me? How you love me. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's so amazing. So amazing. So amazing. It's amazing. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Over and over again. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. A friend of God. Let's take it out. So God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. Say God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me be friend, God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called, you have called me friend, so God Almighty, God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called, you Let's do that one more time. He say, God of my God Almighty, Lord of glory, glory, you have called, you have called me friend. Say, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I'm a friend of God. Calls me friend. Come on, y'all. Come on, sing it. I am a friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Friend of God. I am a friend of God. Why? He calls me friend. Let me hear y'all sing it with her. Say, I am a friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Friend of God. He calls me friend. Last time I say, I am a friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Friend of God. I am a friend of God. He, he calls me friend. He calls. He calls me friend. He calls. He calls me friend. He calls. He calls me friend.
know you can carry. You can carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace! Let the church say amen. amen. Is Jesus our friend? Come on, if he's your friend, he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. We thank God tonight. We thank God tonight that we have come. We have come just to proclaim our relationship with Jesus. You know, our at the base of our faith is this understanding that we must have a personal relationship with God. How many of y'all know you're not getting to heaven on your relationship with me? When I get to heaven, they're not going to ask me if I was a pastor. They're going to ask me, did I have a relationship with something bigger than me? And so that's what makes the Lord our friend. Is that we have a relationship with God that is bigger than ourselves. And so we are here tonight to just give God some praise at this middle of the week. How many of y'all on Facebook needed a boost this week? Who on YouTube needed a boost this week? And I know I'm talking to some folks in here that needed a boost this week. In fact, I needed a boost 10 minutes ago, but the Lord is good. And he is my friend. There's not a friend like the Lord, lead Jesus. No, not one, no, not one, there's not a friend, type friend on Facebook or YouTube, like the Lord, lead Jesus, no, not one, no, Jesus knows all about our struggle. He will 
God till the day is. I hope y'all think we don't just sing this on Sunday. There's not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No. Anybody in here ever been sick? Anybody been sick? No one can heal all our souls, diseases. No, not one. No, not one. If you believe he knows, lift your hands at home. Jesus knows all about our struggles he will guide till the day is done oh there's not a friend like the lonely Jesus no not one no not one come on can you sing it today no not one no not one no not one no So since he's our friend, it's power time. It's power time. Oh, yes, it's power time. Come on, give God a round of applause today because he's your friend. And we are working with power, working with power. We thank God uh, for tonight. We thank God for you on Facebook and YouTube. I'm going to ask you all to participate in cyberspace on Facebook and YouTube and just type no not one no not one we're going to cover um, before we get started we're going to uh, address a few technical difficulties all right Dave I'm, uh, I'm about to use this headset y'all ready all right I can attest to this because I have been doing this now 23 years. It is, it is difficult to work all day and to come in here and give your energy like that. So let us put our hands together for them again. I know what that's like. But God always makes a way. God will always make a way. And so we're going to Go to the book of Revelation tonight, so if you can't find it, shame on you. Uh, the book of, or maybe you, maybe you bought one of them funny Bibles at the Bible store that only had the Old Testament or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, at Facebook and YouTube, find it. Find it, the book of Revelation. Um, when I first got to Liberty, our, our first Maybe our first lesson, it's been so long now, I can't remember, was on the book of Revelation, and we stayed there about four months. And uh, during that time, we talked about uh, the various prophetic things that were going on in the book of Revelation. Uh, for these next few weeks, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to speak on, teach on the seven characters of the churches that are addressed in the book of Revelation. And I'm going to take, you know, y'all do know Revelation is not an easy book, right? 
So when we do that, I'm going to have to go back through my notes, retype some stuff, rethink some stuff uh, before we go into the prophetic message of Revelation. But I think we're on good ground today uh, to look at the seven churches that are present in the book of Revelation. And so the question that we're going to ask uh, the next uh, few weeks or to consider is this. Uh, which church are you a member of? What church is you? I think what you're going to find is that you, some of y'all may be a part of two or three of them, and others may be a part of one, but I really want, I really, this is what I've been stressing. We need to see ourselves. That's how you grow in studying the Word. We need to see ourselves uh, in the Bible and what we need to do to grow in grace. All right. So uh, tonight we're going to go to Revelation 2, um, the message uh, to the church at Ephesus. And we know that Ephesus is a church that Paul wrote to as well. So if you ask yourselves, where are these, why these seven churches? These churches, as John is writing, would have been familiar to those who are reading. These were churches, provinces that were known for the time. So let's say if John was writing today, he might say to the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church of Chicago, to the church at Chicago, or to church on the south side. So John is writing, speaking, to active ministries of the time. And one of the great things we learn in Revelation that we can learn throughout the biblical account, people have not changed that much. So how does that help us? A lot of things that we encounter with individuals are human nature. And so we should not so easily get frustrated with people because it's just human nature. First of all, it's human nature for you to get frustrated, and it is human nature for people to act crazy. And when we look at the Bible, these things that frustrate us, we find that this has been going on since the beginning of time. Since sin entered man, there has been conflict. We're going to preach a little bit about it Sunday, so I'm not going to give you my Sunday thunder. But problems are a part of life. And I don't know where we got as Christians that struggle, uh, disagreement, or whatever is always... Notice I said always. It is sometimes, but not always. Sort of this demonic thing. People have been people since the beginning of time. And we, when we look at these churches, and especially when we see ourselves, we'll acknowledge that. Now, all of these churches, I wanted to, to show you that the Bible is not this just happenstance writing. Right? I think when, we, when we're babes in the Bible, and maybe some here today, we look at this Bible as just, especially the Pauline letters, just something that fell out the sky. Or Paul just sat down, he just started writing. Right? Uh, and I want you to know, just like you learn in third grade English, high school English, college English, the writings in the Bible follow a format. It found a very specific, prescribed format. These books are not written by unintelligent people. They're written by educated people. Just as you would read something now, and you could tell you're reading for somebody who has been taught how to write. No matter what level that is, you can, when you're reading something, you can tell they have been taught how to write. Well, the same is with the Bible. And we miss that when we don't understand the Bible. There are certain things in the Bible that are written for a purpose. So I'm going to walk you through, before we talk about the church at Ephesus, the format that is used in addressing each of these churches. The first thing, if you go to Revelation 2, uh, the first thing you'll see is he is in all of these, 
He addresses the destination. He is telling who he is writing to. Verse 1, to the angel of the church in Ephesus. The destination is very clear. The angel of the church would be the leader of the church, the pastor of the church. Now, that's heavy. Uh, you might have heard in other contexts, um, old school Baptist people, they say, and to the angel of the house, the reverend doctor, the pastor, so that's where that comes from. Um, it is frightening from my seat, right? Oh, that's kind of too heavy for me. Angel, hold up, hold up. But it does speak to the importance of the role of the pastor. The pastor does not operate on what you think it should be. He or she's role is to be connected to that which is divine and not that which is carnal. So you might not always pick up. And this is for, we got some people from other churches on Facebook and YouTube, tell your pastors I'm helping them out tonight. You might not always pick up what the pastor's putting down because you ain't getting it from where they're getting it from. That's not what you're called to do. And we get it mixed up. Well, if I, what you ain't. Right? And so it was very, it was very specific here. The writings from John is not to the church at Ephesus. It ain't to the deacon board. It ain't to the choir. It's to the angel of the church at Ephesus. And so our jobs as pastors, you know, to jump on us, we need to take our job so seriously because the message given to the church is not about us. Maybe you think I just do it because it sounds a certain way. Every Sunday, every Sunday, the prayer before you hear is, Lord, let not the words of my mouth be of my own understanding nor my opinion. I'm not playing with y'all. This is serious business. Right? And so we got to think about that in our spiritual realm. It's right here. Who is Jesus speaking to? This is Jesus speaking, by the way, uh, to the churches. Okay? And so let us keep that in mind when we think about the hierarchy of the church. To much is given, much is respected. We should expect it. We should not take that angel title to mean we need to walk in here with wings with lights on them on Sunday and, and stand over the people. But what that does mean is we have to bear the cross sometimes of hearing from Jesus when nobody else is hearing the same message. And when you sit in the pew, sometimes you have to be comfortable with the fact you're not hearing what the pastor's hearing. You were not called to hear what the pastor hears. He might not be hearing what you've been hearing for 50 years. He might be hearing something for the first time, he or she, in the past five seconds, 50 seconds. There were several moments Sunday, and I always say it, something came up, my mouth wasn't on the paper. I'm having an out-of-body experience. I'm talking to you, and I'm like, man, where'd that come from? Right? Y'all don't see it. But our spirituality really is about this top-down communication. It does not mean I know everything. It does not mean I always get it right. Right? It does not mean that, but it's a way that we interact so we can get through this thing together. Okay? What's the, I always tell y'all? One thing you may go to bed at night with is, well, I disagree with him, but I know that little dude think he's hearing from God. If I can get that out of him, that's fine. You know, he believe he's hearing from God. This is ridiculous. And he messed up. But you know what? 
He believes he heard from God. That's all I can ask for you. And as I pick you up, you pick me up. All right? All right, so that's the first thing. It is clear who he is writing to. The second element is there is a command to write. Right? Each one will have a command to write. It says, to the angel of the church in Ephesus, write. Right? So not only is this to them, but he's telling John, write it. That's how we get revelation. It's addressed to who it is, and it's written. Now, as we look at the other churches, this is important for us. And I want you to, as I talk about churches, think of you all, think of yourselves individually too. I, I mentioned this last week. We individually make up the collective body of the church. So the church will reflect the collective personalities of everyone sitting in the pews. And that's why it is important for you to take care of you, to make the body stronger. So as we talk about this stuff, uh, think about that. So there's some specificity in to the angel of the church in Ephesus that I want to share with you tonight. When God speaks to you, it's for you. We are going to go through seven churches. He ain't saying the same thing to Ephesus that he's saying to Smyrna. And we all have to stop living our lives where what God is saying to somebody else, you just think he's saying it to you. And then we become copycats. And we really don't feel, get the full experience with God because we're trying to be like somebody else. In the church realm, so-and-so had a concert, we going to have one. So-and-so got money, we got money, we going to, but if that's not our call, we are wasting our time. Because that might not be the character of this church. Right? I can't try to be somebody else. I can just try to be me. Right? So, so notice that. That the message is very specific to who it is about what they need. There's a specific message to, to God, to you, about who you are and what you need. And we got to stop worrying about who else we think God should be talking to. Just worry about God talking to you. What's God saying to you? How many of us go to bed and I say, I sure wish the Lord talked to so-and-so, get them right. That got to do with you. Right? That's why it's starting off on there's not a friend with such a great thing because this is my friend and I having a conversation. And with me and my friend talking, you ain't got nothing to do with it. Because it's me and my friend in dialogue. This is Jesus talking to this church about their need, right? And in the Christian body, what liberty needs is not what somebody else needs, right? And so as believers, what do we oftentimes do, right? Because we got friends at other places. Oh, so-and-so's church is, so-and-so's pastor is. Well, that's good. They ain't got the same address. They ain't got the same people in there. Because we all make the character up of our church. It ain't just me. We all, and so we might not be able to do things like somebody else because the character of our church, what God has given us, which is blessed, is what we need to focus on. God, what are you saying to me about me? Not everybody else around me. What do you have to say to me about me? Okay, and that's, that's another lesson that we learn here. So we got the command, the destination, command to write, and we got who's saying it. These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his, among the seven gold lamp stands. All right? And we, we see this all comes to fruition in Revelation chapter 1. In Revelation chapter 1, when we get the description of Jesus, he's the one who holds 
the seven lampstands and all of that. So it doesn't specifically say Jesus, but we have this long description of Jesus in Revelation 1, 9 through the end. Okay? So it always make clear who we writing to, who he's writing to, the command to write, and who's saying it. Right? John's making it very clear. I'm not saying it. Jesus is saying it. That's very important in this revelatory experience. All right? Um, the next thing is we go into um, who says it, who is saying it, who says. And the fifth piece is I know. It's heavy, y'all. Jesus is talking to the church and telling them, I know. You ever, did y'all ever have your parents do that to you? You run up to your parents and your mom and dad said, I know. I ain't trying to hear nothing from you. Be quiet. Listen. Because I know. I know all about you. There's a prayer point there. Get on your knees instead of this long list of what you want God to do and just listen because he already knows. He trying to be quiet. I know. Listen to me what the instructions are. are. God knows. So, he, so you're hearing all of these things with this, these churches. He says, I know. Right? And that's where you get back talk straight too, right? Because whenever somebody won't, if you ever ask somebody, you're trying to tell them something. They say, wait, wait, wait. And then you have to say, I know. Be quiet. I know. Isn't it good to know that our Lord knows? It's so omnipotent, so powerful that he knows. If you're sitting in here at, at any point tonight with any pain or what, I might not know, but God knows. And God's saying, because I know I got an answer for you, but I need you to hear me. You're not hearing me. I know. I know who your mom is. I know where you from. I know if you sick or not. I know who gets on your nerves, who don't get on. I know how full or empty your bank. I know. And because I know, take some time. And how do we listen? He shows us. He may, that's why we all got to be on the same. We all have to be spiritually, as spiritually strong as we can. We're not going to be spiritually perfect because God, and it has been times, God has sent some of you all to talk to me. And I had to be receptive to that because I would have had a conversation about something and I'm pondering something. And then all of a sudden on a Sunday, y'all will walk up to me and say so, right? I know this is, this is more a joke, but I got to tell it. So I really like church grits. So I come downstairs. I know the stove ain't working. Lord, can we get some grits? Pat is cooking grits. The Lord moving. Y'all got to see God in the small stuff. Y'all missing it. If you can't see him in the small stuff, you won't see him in the big stuff. See, I, I've learned, praise God, for some grits. I don't need no steak. Y'all can only praise God if all this old big stuff happening. Look, I praise God when I think I ain't going to make the light, and I got five minutes to get to work, and something happened, and oh, that ain't nothing but the Lord. Y'all got to learn how to praise God. And what looks like, I praise God, and I've shared this with y'all before, when I'm in the checkout counter line, and the line is way back, and I'm sitting there waiting because I'm a pretty patient guy, but the checkout counter next to me open, and that person cut me off still in line, but I get up, I learn how to give God some praise. I made it. <laughs> it's in those everyday encounters, though, on a serious note. If you really believe God is the author and the finisher of your faith, if you really believe God can move the chess pieces of your lives, you'll begin to see God in that small stuff. I see God when it's pouring down rain and outside, 
and I got to get to get home from work and walk to the parking garage and I step out and it stopped raining. And it, this happened a, a day or so ago. And it's like I'm walking through raindrops and I don't have a drop. That's God to me. I don't know what it is to you. That ain't luck to me. That ain't luck to me. So we need to see God when God says he knows. Listen to God and actions from others that might be brought. Uh, things where nothing is being said. Those were examples. So we, we need to understand that. Uh, the sixth part that, we'll, we'll, that happens in these letters, this is what we got to learn as believers. There's admonition and exhortation. Admonition and exhortation. What does that mean? When he, when Jesus is speaking to the churches, he's not just telling them what's bad about them. We great on admonition. Right? We can admonish away. That's not right. That's not right. That's not right. You didn't do that right. You didn't say, but Jesus, as he, as he's, he, from his high place, he takes time to say, but you're doing this great. You're blessing the body by doing this great. How many of us as believers, we walk through life and we don't see nothing good about nothing and nobody. Y'all know people like, ain't nobody I know, ain't nobody I'm talking to. That's why I ain't looking at y'all. I can't see. But think about that. You ever find real starch church folks? You got nothing good. They don't never say thank you. They don't never say good job. I'm glad you showed up. But let you mess, let Pat cook them grits too long. <laughs> At what, what, what happened to you this week? You, you missed it. But all the good days, all the good days, got nothing to say. So we learn from Christ here that you got to taste past grits, comedian. <laughs> Admonition and exhortation is a part of the discussion at each of these churches. We have to learn that on our jobs, with our families, with our mates, in the church, with our children, right? Uh, parents, let's keep it real. You know, there, there have been seasons where I've had to catch myself, right? I'm telling the girls everything wrong. You got to do it. You got to do it. You ain't doing it. You're getting on my nerves. You ain't doing it. Oh, hold on, hold on. But look at how, look at all the good stuff that's happening. I got to remember that. I can exhort and discipline at the same time. Difficult to do because our minds are wired to go to the negative. Mine is, I had to check my, you know, I'm first thing. Let me just, hold on, what's the good thing? Because a good thing tones that negative down. Doesn't make it less strong, but it operates in a certain space. So we're going to be in fellowship with one another. Let's try to keep uh, ab, ab, admonishment and exhortation in balance. Now, what is, what is it not? Well, you know, I love you, but you're missing it. You're missing it. Or the one that I love the best uh, Facebook and YouTube is uh, the Lord told me to tell you so I'm no the Lord does not tell you to act ugly I'm sorry I'm sorry right Jesus is not speaking to these churches that do have issues in a negative kind of way but he's very clear all right um, the end is he lets us know. This is, I think, what makes it relevant to us when we get to the end. It says, and to anyone that has an ear to hear, let him hear. So at that time, this becomes a global message to us today, right? When this is written, Jesus is saying on April 17th, if you want to hear, 2024, if you want to hear, hear. Anyone 
who has an ear to listen to this. And then it closes with, we'll have the victory. Right? So the, oftentimes these letters are written from, they didn't do this. They didn't do that. But there's more going on in that. It's listening, admonishment. It's uh, open it up to everybody. And then there's a victory. If you do this, there is, I have something for you. All right? So um, let's begin to read this now. Let's go to Revelation 2, 1 through 3. Revelation 2, 1 through 3. And we've already covered the uh, different thing, the, the seven portions. So we're just going to kind of talk about what church are we in? To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks among the seven gold lampstands. I know your works, your toil, your patient endurance. I know that you cannot tolerate evildoers. You have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them to be false. I also know that you are enduring patiently and bearing up for the sake of my name, and that you have not grown weary. Whoa! That sound good to me. Sound good to you? I, I wish the Lord could write me that, right? Let's talk about the actual church at Ephesus. Ephesus was the largest church in the Roman province of Asia. Ephesus was at the epicenter of Christianity during that time. That's why Paul does some of his most complex writings to Ephesians. All right? Uh, when he gets to Ephesians, he's not really dealing with communion and all of that. He's dealing with the universe the world, and the home, all right? So Ephesus was a major church, and here, he's saying some good stuff, right? Y'all agree? They're patient. They got some phonies coming in. They got some phonies in, calling themselves. Now, when we talk about apostles, uh, and then you're going to be able to understand another denomination as we share this, we're not talking about simply the 12 apostles, this apostles concept had grown from the 12 to apostles being missionaries, what we would call now evangelists, uh, what we might call now preachers, whatever. So these are people that are coming to Ephesus, teaching, uh, proclaiming to be Christians, but their doctrine is off. And Ephesians, the people at Ephesus specialize in saying, that ain't right. Sound good, dress good, but it ain't right, okay? So when we talk about, and so now when you are in other places and you may go to and other denominations have apostles so-and-so, that's where that comes from, okay? So just because we don't exercise it in the Baptist tradition, do not walk out of here embarrassing me, <laughs> arguing with somebody because their pastor is apostle, whatever, Right? Please, okay, this is where they get it from, all right? But don't let them put you down because I ain't apostle, whatever. Wait, why do we hang, why do we get distracted by so much stupid stuff like that? We got so many other things to worry about. Kids need to eat, crime, saving souls, but we want to get on bus stop, hung up about, well, you know, ap apostles. Oh, come on, man. We have no time for that in Liberty Baptist Church of Chicago. Amen. No time for that. We have, we trying to build bridges and bring the kingdom together. But what we're not going to do is let nobody tell us that what we do is less than. We're going to shake the dust off our feet. We ain't going to argue. I'm going to do like Jesus said. I'm going to wipe my feet, keep it moving, and continue to do the work of the Lord, okay? But that's where that, that apostle thing comes from. So, 
They are doing some great stuff. And if it had not been for verse 4, which I will read, if we close the book up, many of us in here will say, well, doggone, it's a great church. Right? It's a great church. What we learn as we entertain tonight what church we belong to, we learn from this passage a truth. To do church is not enough. Everything described is church stuff. I see y'all go to Sunday school and you all study and you, you know people who are not educated and not qualified to present to you. You do that well. You're patiently waiting for me to come. Locked up in your building. You do that very, very well. You have all the rules of the world. You know how to do everything. You know how to do every tea, every banquet, every prayer session, every concert. The choir hits every note. And yet, you're missing something. I ain't making it up, but y'all just never read it like that. You got all this, you praying all night long, you waiting for me to come back again. What? But you, it's not enough. You missed something. Isn't that something? To think we can do all the church in the world, all the positioning in the world, and still miss it. Are you missing your assignment because you're too busy in church? Are you missing it on Facebook? Are you missing? Do you have, do you know exactly what to put on every first Sunday? Do you have your church clothes laid out for every Sunday of the week? I do. I do. But that ain't enough. Are you well educated from the educated of the educated? And, and do you attend all of the study sessions? It's not enough. It's not enough when it seemingly distracts us. Church work can distract you. What you think is church. What you think is holy. Most things that we think are holy is stuff people created. You never hear anybody talk about someone's holy in the church because they kind. Why? Would that seem like that should be somebody that's holy? Somebody is holy in church because they're benevolent. Somebody is holy in church because they, you know, they they just they open hearted. They 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 give you everything that they can. No, we used to sit where well, they holy because they what they got on. Because they've been ordained, because they back in the day, because they sit on the front row. Our definition of holiness down through the years has been all stuff we created and not what God has asked us to be. Now we're going to catch this with somebody that ain't catching me right tonight. I ain't got no problem with people sitting on the front row. You wear at your church what you wear on the, in your church. But we learn from Ephesus that that ain't enough. That's not what's going to work. So let's, let's think about, let's, let's talk about what's going to work as we go to, uh, did I cover everything there? Yeah. All right. So, the, so let's go to uh, four and five. So you're doing all this right. I'm lifting y'all up, doing all this right. So please... If you're under the sound of my voice and you are patiently waiting and you're in Bible class, do not stop. I ain't saying that. But this is, you got to go to another level. But I have this against you. That you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then from what you have fallen Repent and do the works you did at first. Now, this is heavy. 
If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. So I'm going to work this thing backwards. It's one of them things that then, like I said, when I'm preaching, hit me the last minute. When you find a church that is dying in whatever capacity you want to describe dying, it's because Jesus has left the building. And you got to recognize when Jesus leaves the building. And you don't recognize when Jesus leaves the building because you still going through the motions. You still going through verses one through three. You waiting, you exercising, and then you blame the whole world why the light is going out. But it's out because Jesus has left the building. Because we abandon that thing that ought to be first. And in that fifth verse, the word that he keeps, he challenges them to do twice. And I'm going to make it, may not be this simple, but I'm going to make it simple for purposes of tonight. He mentions this word called repent twice. Repent simply means that when you don't hear from God and don't change, Jesus will leave your building. When you don't hear from God, this is individually and collectively, do not repent. Repent means to change. Jesus leaves your building. Because you're comfortable going through the motion. Gordon Humphrey Jr. preached that years ago. And many of us remember that 30 years ago. I was right under him. When he turned, almost hit me in my head. He's so happy. Right? Um, 1998. All right. So, think about that. I'm asking you what church you belong to. All right? Don't, don't get in your spirit. Oh, I know who he's talking about. He's talking about liberty. No, I'm talking about you. Repeat it now. He's talking about me. Okay. Now, if, it, if that mean all of us together, then so be it. But I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about how we miss it. A lot of good things we do. A lot of good things we do, but we miss it. On, on Facebook, type, I'm talking about me. YouTube, type, uh, I'm talking about me, all right? And, then, and if you're on Facebook and YouTube, some of y'all on Facebook and YouTube in here, that's good. I see you. I see you when y'all be typing while y'all here, when I get home. Uh, type, I don't want to miss it. So I work, I work this thing backwards. Let's talk about, and I'm going to use me as an example um, this, this returning to your first love. He doesn't say what it is. But he's saying, reflect on how you used to be. There's nothing in there about them bringing souls to Christ. The energy. Remember when you first met the Lord, how happy you were? How happy you were. And then somewhere down the line, you move from salvation to being ultra-churched. And you miss, you miss blessing of living just because God is. Your first love to want to see people come to Christ want to help others. Um, I struggle. Struggle may be the wrong word, but I identify that in my life. I got saved at six years old. And nobody tell me to go down the aisle. None of that. I knew what I was doing. And mom and daddy later found out. And when you were around, Sister Conley, I knew what I was doing. And I oftentimes gain energy from my six to ten-year-old self. 
Because when I was six to ten years old, now when you're young, you're innocent. It was just about being with the Lord. It's just about, I believe in Jesus, right? I, I didn't have to entertain, did Jesus die on Good Thursday or Good Friday? Did this really happen? It was just like, I love God. And I want to be in the presence of God. I want to do God's work. I can't wait till I get big as my daddy to do God's work. And then all of a sudden, I grew up. And it becomes what the deacons got on this Sunday. Right? It becomes when is the meeting happening? It becomes when we all get some, fill some seats up in here. It's gonna, it becomes how long it's going to take us to do the budget. It becomes how, how are we going to get the church fixed? And I got to return when I'm in that box on Sunday, I return to that six to ten year old guy that says, I just love the Lord. I'm not, I'm not concerned with, with, with all this. I got to, to get to the essence of who I am, I got to go back to that time where I. You know, and, and so now I'm getting, I'm jumping off me, I'm jump on y'all. You know. Oh. What kind of songs we singing? <laughs> Are we singing two new songs? Are we singing enough old songs? Should we let that person sing? They can't really sing because we want everybody to watch. I want to just get back to when I would just sit and if you sang a song and you couldn't sing, I still get up and clap. Yes, yes. It wasn't about being entertained. It wasn't about, I like this one, I don't like that one. That's the kind of deviation from our first love that we move away from. Who's here this morning? Who showed up? Why she ain't here today? I heard he was mad. Where he at? Did you know so-and-so resigned? Where they at? Getting distracted. And so, I, I have wept over the fact that that six-year-old guy got all these extra new problems. And I just used to be so happy just to have Jesus. And I got a call. I got a call on that guy sometime. Right? When I'm, I'm getting distracted. Right? And then I've learned I got to move people out the way who are distractions. Because that six year old guy can't raise up if I'm coming in here every week looking at distractions. Right? So when we talk about our first love, that's it. Are you really grabbing that essence of the excitement you had when you first met the Lord? Well, it didn't matter what anybody thought. It didn't matter what anybody said. And now some of us, our parents pushed us down the aisle. I get it, right? But even, now, even then, after you got pushed down the aisle, something happened in your life as you matured. I don't know when that happened to you. But when them tears came down your eyes, you didn't care about what the deacons had on. You didn't care about if it was first Sunday or not. You didn't even care what they were singing. You, matter of fact, you can't even remember what they were singing. Because you was in love with this thing. You wanted to be here. And so as we look at the growth of our church, we want people, when they come here, they need to feel that first love again. Just love to be here. I told somebody a, a few weeks ago, I said, you know, liberty is not going to experience its blessing because it's got the greatest music in town. It's not going to experience its greatest blessing because it has the best preacher in town. I'm far from that. But there's be such a love in this place. Such a love and joy to be here that if I get up and talk backwards, they still gonna say, That's my path. I 
just want to. I just want to be here. I don't know why. But it's something about me coming in here and the way we love each other and what we doing. I don't know what Rev is saying today, but amen, Rev. I don't know what the choir talking about, but I know they singing about Jesus. And because I love him, hallelujah. Just like that. But that's what we are trying to create. Not a replication of anything other than, I want you all to come in here for a moment. Because we can't divorce ourselves from the work of the church. But for that hour and a half, for this time, all oh, that need to go to the side. When you at home in your prayer closet, don't be thinking about your trustee work. It's going to be all right. Can I keep it real? You close your eyes tomorrow. I'm going to pray and preach over you. And then whatever that project is, it's going to happen the next month. And the same for me. Y'all going to go pull a committee together, fight about it, talk about who y'all, get somebody in that's going to entertain y'all, and move on. Okay? So we should not take ourselves that seriously. Especially if it's going to get us away from that first love, that first joy. All right. All right. Let's uh, continue. We almost uh, through. Um, we, will, we will bring it up again because y'all asked me um, to do it. When the church does not change. God will leave the building. When you do not repent and change, God will leave your house, apartment, car, or wherever you are. And don't spend your life thinking about all the other folks that should repent. Take care of you. Take care of you. It's hard. It's hard to take care of you, especially when you're dealing with somebody who nuts. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. I ain't saying y'all nuts. I'm just saying. It's hard. It's hard. But you, but you got it. This is, you got to look for this in, internal strength. And as we talk about Holy Week, that's the strength that Christ exhibited on the cross. Right? He was focused on what he needed to do. Regardless of the stuff that was happening around him. We'll never be Christ, but that's a model to keep in our minds. Uh, verse 6. Um, there was another faction called the Nicolaitans. Uh, the Nicolaitans is just a, uh, a Christian sect in Ephesus that was much like the apostles that he already talked about. He was just being specific. Specific, calling him out um, by name. But let us go. Let's finish up. We'll start with verse 6. Yet, this is to your credit. See, he goes back. After he tells him about the first, he goes back. He goes back. Yes, this is to your credit. You hate the works of the Nicolaitans which I also hate. Let anyone who has an ear listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. That's key. What the Spirit is saying to the churches. Um, for those of you that listen intently, you've probably heard this two or three times. For those of you who don't listen intently, you're going to hear this as if you heard it the first time. I was in a church meeting. I will not say what church. I've been to three, so it's one of the three. And I was in a leadership meeting. And as I talked, as I told you all earlier, there was a decision that had to be made. Transitional decision. Where initially, I was the only one on the side of that fence. So I asked the Lord, show me a sign. It's good when the Lord uses people to show you signs and they don't know it. 
And you just sit there like, I got it. He don't know I got it, but I got it. So in the middle of this meeting, I was presenting something. And uh, the person was actually on board, but just, just brought this up. And the person said, we said we would never do this. When I heard that, I said, thank you, God. That means we should do it. It's in the book. I'm teaching y'all the Bible. I'm sorry. He who has an ear, listen to what the Spirit says. When we become the church at Ephesus, we say, we would never do this. I can't believe this is happening around here. I can't believe, in, in our personal life, I said I would never be kind to Sally after what she did. We say what well, a lot of things we won't do until the Spirit tells us to do otherwise. What are you not engaging in your life, stepping out to do? Because you saying what you going to do. What is the Spirit saying about your actions? Where does, where does God come in to the decision make? Oh, but have we arrived so much that we don't even need to consult the Spirit of God? Are we so churchy? We don't even need to check in with what God has to say. Are our position so grand? Is our, is our legacy in the church so strong that God has now stopped speaking? Has that, have we missed it? We're missing it. What does the Spirit have to say? Not what you have to say. And then we have the victory. We have the victory. To everyone who conquers. How many of us know we're more than conquerors? That word for praise today. Facebook, we, that's word for praise. We are to everyone who conquers. Oh, we look at this. We will conquer. I will give permission to eat from the tree of life. That's in the paradise of God. Change. So Christ doesn't leave your building. Hear from the Spirit so you can live in the blessed paradise of God. Let's give God some praise today. All right, all right. Thank you, Facebook and YouTube. We're glad to have you. We can go on a bit of overtime tonight. We've had, we've had some good discussion. Uh, we're going to go to Facebook and YouTube. Uh, tell me what they're saying and not their names, but just what they got to say, what we got going on. And Harold, can you pick up any comments? If you got some comments, drop them in. If you need to go, you can go. But if you got some comments and you want to go five minutes overtime, y'all watch LeBron James if he went in overtime, so y'all can go a little <laughs> overtime. Okay. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, Ron. So On YouTube, gonna... Pastor Hunt, you are so right. God, God, every time I see a penny in the path for me to pick up, I see God in so many small things. Uh, then this one said, I do not have my church clothes ready. And then have one was saying, uh, that, that's it, Pastor. Okay, all right. <laughs> A little complicated uh, typing on Facebook and YouTube right. today. Yeah, one person said, I come for me. I don't care about what's going on. That's right. That's right. That's right. But you got to find that balance. That I come for me, be careful. Because you are part of the body of Christ. Right? So you got to take care of you first. And then infuse yourself into the body of Christ with a certain kind of focus. All right. Y'all can bring them papers up here. If, I don't think y'all got them. You don't have them all? All right. Sharon, what we got? Okay, one person said, am I on? Yep. Yeah. Said, um, but the bottom line is we must still love the Lord. And somebody else said, 
Now this is deep. And somebody said, it's hard to take care of you. You must be strong to just take care of yourself. We are so churchy, we forgot our mission. Amen, 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 amen. So we don't have any uh, notes from inside today, but I could tell by your smiles and by your claps that your comments were enough, all right? All right, all right, we like that. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for reminding us of our first love. And God, although we do the work of the church, let us not be distracted from our first love, which is to love our neighbor as ourselves, that we may build the kingdom of God here and create an atmosphere of grace and mercy. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ Sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us. Henceforth, now, and forevermore, let the church say, Amen. Give myself away so you 